Hello, welcome to the fourth season of International Student Recruitment at Peking University Television. My name is Brent Haas. I'm Associate Dean of the Yanjing Academy of Peking University, and it's my pleasure to give you an online introduction to our master's program. So what is the Yanjing Academy of Peking University? Simply put, we are a two-year, fully funded, interdisciplinary master's program in China studies. We study today's China, the changes that have taken place both domestically in China's culture, economy, society, you name it, and the ways that this has changed China's role in the world. Now, part of my job responsibilities are running the admissions process at Yanjing Academy, and I personally attest that those young scholars and professionals who join our program are absolutely brilliant, interesting, and come from all different walks of life, from every place you can imagine around the world. It is truly a magnet for outstanding young scholars. Now, for me personally, I also think a fascinating part of what we're doing at Yanjing Academy is defining what the academic field of China studies means when it's done in China. And now I'd like to take a few minutes to introduce the history of this academic field that should you apply and be admitted, you will now be joining. So it's important to define our terms here. And over the next couple of minutes, I'll be talking about three different modes of interacting intellectually and producing uh, academic output about China. Those three modes of academic inquiry are Sinology, Chinese Studies, and China Studies. So Sinology was the first way through which uh, non-Chinese began engaging with the history, culture, language, and civilization of the place we now know as China. It's heavily focused on philological research into the classics, the received texts of ancient Chinese civilization. But it is also interdisciplinary in that it focused on history, culture, religion, as well as literature. This would begin with missionaries uh, in the 16th and 17th century, but would really become institutionalized into a professional academic calling in the late 19th and early 20th century, most notably by French sinologists. Now, Chinese studies, or what we might call Chinese language studies, would begin in the early 19th century. It was a response to the needs of merchants, missionaries and foreign service officials as they were in the process of more directly engaging with China, albeit unfortunately through um, sometimes imperialism and colonialism. Nevertheless, it made very, very important strides towards introducing um, Western Europeans how to begin to speak and understand the forms of Chinese that were not only spoken in the imperial capital at the time, Beijing, but also spoken in dialect form along uh, the treaty ports and areas along the southeast China coast. And now China Studies is a product of a, an integration of the best practices of um, theories and methodologies brought from the social sciences and integrated into and applied to the study of China. The history of area studies and area studies of China is intimately connected to post-World War II, mid-20th century, um, American, mainly Harvard and University of Washington, innovations in how to teach not only about ancient China's past and civilization, but also about society, culture, economy, and politics of contemporary China. Now, these are the three main ways, broadly defined, that non-Chinese have been interacting academically with China. Now, Sinology as an academic discipline still continues, but mainly in Central and Eastern European University. The study and research on language, culture, and literature in China is more often than not outside of China, um, organized into departments or institutes of, say, East Asian languages and cultures, or East Asian languages and civilizations. There are many different variations on this theme, many different names. Area studies of China or area studies of East Asia is often organized into centers or research institutes of uh, East Asian studies, perhaps, or of China studies, as well as in some academic departments. 
But at both the undergraduate and the graduate level, China is often a regional concentration within another humanities or social sciences department. For instance, a history major with a regional focus on East Asia, or a political science major with a regional focus on China. This is how, um, in most cases outside of China, academic inquiry, teaching and research about China is organized in universities around the world. But this isn't the whole story. What's missing from this story, most notably, is Chinese scholarly influence on Sinology and what we now call China studies. From the very beginning of non-Chinese academically engaging with China, uh, Chinese scholars and Chinese intellectuals were an integral part of this process. Many of the early missionaries and early Sinologists were highly influenced by the work of textual criticism, the so-called evidential scholarship in the Qing dynasty, as well as national learning in the early 20th century. And the growth of humanities and social scientific departments, the sort of implementation of these modern academic disciplines in China's early years of a modern system of higher education in the early 20th century was done by leading academics who were Chinese. And we certainly can't forget how the scholarly output of Chinese academics has been influential not only in the beginning early stages of Sinology, but also in um, the best practices and the best research done outside of China today. If you are, say, an historian of China, you must be aware of the best work that's being done in China about that same topic. But it also gets to a little bit of a, a complication in names. So, Let's say a professor who is Chinese is teaching at Peking University, and this professor works in the Department of Sociology. This professor's research topic might be, say, um, changing family structures over the last 40 years in China. Now, is that person engaging in so-called China studies research, or is that academic simply a sociologist who is of Chinese descent who's working on Chinese society? So this is something that I think is quite interesting, and it's something that we at the Yanjing Academy uh, aim to, and I believe are successful at solving. Because Yanjing Academy is about interdisciplinary China studies, but that interdisciplinary China studies is conducted in China at China's top university, learning from the best academics, the best professors in their field here at Peking University. Now, we've talked a lot so far about the history of Sinology and China studies, but I want to emphasize that Yanjing Academy will teach you these things. You are not required to already have a background in China studies. You're not required to already have previous Chinese language fluency or even proficiency because the language of instruction and of administration at Yanjing Academy is English. Now that having been said, since we are a highly competitive graduate program that focuses on China studies, if you have previous academic experience related to China, a China studies major, a Chinese language minor, uh, if you've done some research papers or if you've traveled to um, or studied or worked in China, then I recommend you emphasize that in your application package. It's not a requirement, but it's possible that it will be a competitive advantage. So all of our courses are offered in English at Yanjing Academy, and we also encourage our students to take courses outside of YCA in other departments and schools at Peking University. For most of our students, that will mean taking courses taught in English in other departments and schools, but if you are at a very high proficiency of Chinese language, you are able to take content courses taught in Chinese for academic credit. I'll tell you a little bit more about that coming up next. Let's talk funding, because in many places in the world, finding a fully funded master's program is quite difficult indeed. At Yanjing Academy, we try to solve the most pressing financial needs of our students by offering the Yanjing Fellowship. This fellowship includes full tuition payment. It includes accommodation, which in the first year will be in the Yanjing Academy house, a lovely renovated dormitory for Yanjing scholars. In the second year, it can be in the Yanjing Academy House, but it might also be off campus with a housing stipend provided as part of your second year fellowship. 
We offer a monthly stipend for living expenses. We also cover one round trip travel from your home base to and from Beijing. Ideally, that'll be at the beginning of the program coming to Beijing and then when you leave in two years upon graduation. But if you need to go back or choose to leave at the end of the first year, we will pay for that return trip. You are responsible, however, for getting yourself back to Beijing for your second year. We also offer basic medical insurance, and this is medical insurance specifically designed for international students as they live and study in China. Now, this is a very large financial investment we're making not only in each individual Yanjing scholar, but also in the entire student body of Yanjing scholars as a whole. Therefore, we have an academic performance review at the end of the first year. There are some clearly defined academic performance standards that all Yanjing scholars must meet. These include completing the minimum required number of academic credits in year one, maintaining a certain minimum GPA, and not seriously violating the code of conduct of the Yanjing Academy, the regulations of Peking University, or the laws of the People's Republic of China. If you meet these standards, you apply for the second year fellowship, and once you meet those standards, you will receive it. There are multiple other forms of um, research and learning funding available at Yanjing Academy, most notably in the first year's the Dean's Research Grant. At the end of the first year and in the second year, we have other grants like opportunity grants, language learning grants. One of my colleagues uh, later in today's um, info session will tell you a little bit more about that. Yanjing scholars, both from mainland China and uh, from overseas, are also able to partake of the uh, exchange programs that both the Yanjing Academy has established with Cornell University, Seoul National University, and Waseda University in Japan, as well as Peking University's own exchange programs. Now, part of the way that we've been able to integrate is interdisciplinary teaching and research methodology in China studies within the system of degree conferral set by China's Ministry of Education is through these six research areas that you see on the screen. We are in many ways uh, studying China within some of the academic disciplines, but we always try to transcend those disciplines uh, to create something new and exciting. Nevertheless, these six research areas will be important to your experience as a Yanjing scholar in three important ways. First, when you apply. When you apply to our program, you select one of these concentrations in which to conduct your research. Now, if you look at these concentrations, economics and management, law and society, literature and culture, they're already quite broad and in many ways interdisciplinary in and of themselves. But you still need to select one of these when you apply. And please be aware that when we're conducting our application review process, we'll be looking at the research area you've chosen, the degrees you are working on or have already obtained in higher education, the courses you have taken, any internship, professional experience, and or research projects that you've worked on. The goal is to make sure there is a solid connection between what you have studied, what you have done, what you're hoping to study at the Yanjing Academy. Now, this does not mean you can only apply to a research area that you already have a degree in. That's not what I mean at all. We want you to study what fascinates you at the graduate level. What this does mean is that we have a responsibility to ensure that those who are admitted into the program have a reasonable foundation, a chance of success, both studying and conducting research at the graduate level. So if you think the research area to which you are applying does not appear on the surface to be connected to what you have studied and done before, anticipate that we'll have some questions and try to address those questions in your application materials. So after you've applied, you've selected a research area, you've been admitted. The second way that this research area will impact your experience as a Yanjing scholar is at the end of your first academic year when you select a thesis advisor for year two of the program. This thesis advisor must be drawn from a department or school at Peking University in one of the fields that you have selected. So for instance, if say you are uh, applying to history and archeology span and you're doing a, let's say you're doing a thesis project 
on um, the growth of the printing industry and periodical press and newspapers in the late 19th through early 20th century in Chinese history, then you're most likely going to want a thesis advisor from the Department of History. If, however, you are doing a, um, a thesis project that's on um, more specifically focused on archaeology, including excavations and techniques of archaeology, then perhaps a professor from the Department of Archaeology would be better suited to mentor your thesis work than someone from the Department of History. And finally, when you graduate, this is what's going to show up on your uh, master's degree diploma. Let's take economics and management, for instance. It will say Peking University, Master of Economics, and just below that, China Studies, Economics and Management, or Peking University, Master of Law, just below that, China Studies, Law and Society. This is because in China's um, degree granting system, China Studies is what's called a second level um, academic area of inquiry as opposed to a first level like history or economics or law or philosophy. What you see on this slide here in the upper left are the four core courses that all Yanjing scholars take together in their first year in the program. And I need to emphasize that all coursework is completed in year one at Yanjing Academy. Year two, on the other hand, is devoted to perhaps internships, but definitely devoted to conceptualizing, conducting your research, analyzing the data, building up towards writing, editing, and defending your master's thesis. We think that the second year in China, with the freedom of, of not having courses, that allows you to really focus on producing an outstanding master's thesis, as well as gives you a lot more time to more deeply engage with Peking University, with Beijing, and with China as a whole. I'd like to highlight our flagship course uh, in this moment. It's China in Transition 1 and 2. China in Transition is a full year, two semester, interdisciplinary look at contemporary China. The first semester is a large class where all Yanjing scholars are in the lecture hall together. It is co-taught by 12 to 15 leading professors at Peking University. There'll be a module on the Chinese political system, Chinese history, Chinese economy, uh, culture, society, etc. This large lecture and sometimes debate or symposium is then uh, combined with smaller sections of discussion. In the spring semester, however, uh, we focus on field research. You then select a um, section of China in Transition Part 2 taught by one of the uh, faculty members who co-taught the large uh, group class in the fall. You choose the professor whose research interests and methods most align with your own developing interests, and the professor then guides you and your classmates to individual or small group field research projects. The goal of this course is by the time you finish, at the end of your first academic year, you already have on the ground field research experience in China, even before you start your master's thesis that summer or in the second year. I also want to emphasize that all non-native Chinese speaking Yanjing scholars are required to take Chinese language courses in their first year. Unless you have already passed the HSK level six, HSK is mainland China's uh, standardized test for assessing Chinese language proficiency in non-native learners. If you've passed the HSK level six within the last two years, you can place out of our Chinese as a second language courses but you still have to fulfill the same number of course credits, and we encourage you to take at least one course taught in Chinese in another department or school at Peking University as part of your fulfilling the required course credits. As far as I know, Yanjing Academy's academic advisor system is incredibly unique in China. As you can see here on this slide, we have over 140 professors uh, spread out between 24 different schools and departments at Peking University who are potential thesis advisors for Yanjing scholars. This means they have either been one in the past, currently are an advisor, or have expressed willingness to be advisors in the future. So you can see through the list of the diverse list of uh, departments, institutes, and schools at the university, 
just how highly integrated the Engineering Academy is into the broader academic community at Peking University, Peking University in the humanities and social sciences. There will be so much going on outside of the class in terms of extracurricular offerings in your time at Yenjing Academy that you will not be able to do everything. Uh, you shouldn't try to attend all the events because of course your first goal is completing your academic responsibilities. Nevertheless, one of our real important, um, I would say most important extracurricular events is what you see here on the screen, the Yenjing Global Symposium. This is an international China Studies Conference that is conceptualized and organized by Yenjing scholars themselves. We bring uh, leading academics and figures in different fields uh, and professions to be keynote speakers, to share paper presentations, to have roundtable discussions, as well as bringing um, young scholars or young professionals, uh, mainly in their 20s, over to Beijing to join for a long weekend of networking of paper discussions and um, uh, generally engaging with the broader Yanjing Academy community. You can see the first six Yanjing Global Symposia here and the themes that were thought up by Yanjing scholars. 2023 uh, was the first time that we took the Yanjing Global Symposium out of Peking University's campus. We went down to Hainan province, an island province off the southeast coast of China. And the theme, Humanity, Cartographies of Collaboration, was also thought up by Yanjing scholars. It was a highly intense but very productive learning experience. We have now admitted nine cohorts of Yanjing scholars into our program over the last nine years. Those of you who might be considering applying for uh, the 2024 intake would be the 10th cohort of Yanjing scholars. Over the last nine cohorts, we have brought in just under a thousand scholars to the Yanjing Academy, and these scholars have come from 82 different countries and regions around the world. Uh, you can see the top level breakdown in different regions, about 40% from Asia, about 25% from Europe, including the UK, uh, just under 30% from North America, 4% from Africa, 2% from Oceania, and 5% from Latin America. Uh, we certainly have room for improvement to uh, bring more scholars in from the developing world. Uh, but what I think you can see from this slide here is that scholars who join our program are from all walks of life, different cultural, political, religious, uh, and regional backgrounds. It's a highly diverse, very engaging student community. Over the first nine years of admission intakes into Yanjing Academy. We've had scholars join us from just under 375 universities worldwide. Here you can see the top 21 universities that have placed the highest number of graduates into our program. Now, you don't have to be from one of these universities to get into the Yanjing Academy. Uh, we do want to have more representative diversity from scholars at top universities in their home countries and in their home regions. This just happens to be the universities that place the highest number of graduates in our program. Once you're in the program, we also offer uh, extracurricular uh, training and uh, programming to help develop yourself as a professional uh, for, and as a leader as you think about moving into the next stage of your career. Uh, one of the key initiatives that we've been building over the last several years is our professional mentorship program. We have 15 or more uh, leaders in different fields and industries um, based in Beijing, but not necessarily Chinese, who are here to uh, meet Yanjing scholars and have expressed a willingness to join into a mentor-mentee relationship. We have mentors from uh, cultural preservation fields, uh, the tech industry, uh, diplomacy. Uh, we have people from uh, financial world and financial analysis, all interested in working closely with you. Now, the nature of that mentor-mentee relationship will be decided by the two participants involved, but it could include individual meetings, advice for uh, breaking into the field, perhaps even something like professional shadowing in their job. Yanjing scholars are highly successful at moving into the next stage of their career upon graduation from the program. 
On the left, you can see some of the top universities around the world where current Yanjing scholars are pursuing further graduate study after leaving the program. Roughly 20, sometimes as much as 30% of Yanjing scholars go on to further graduate study after leaving us, uh, generally at the doctoral level, but sometimes to law school, sometimes on to other master's programs or MBAs as well. But the majority of Yanjing scholars move into the professional stage of their career. And on the right, you can see some of the uh, consulting firms, government ministries, international organizations, etc., that Yanjing scholars have found productive forms of employment to expand their professional potential and take the next steps into their lives. Now let's talk about what I hope you're now interested in learning about, and that is how to apply to the program. Well, our minimum requirement is you must complete your bachelor's degree in August of the year in which you hope to enroll. So if you're applying right now in the last year of your university bachelor's degree program and you're hoping to enroll in September of 2024, that's perfectly fine. Most of our applicants apply in the last year of their bachelor's program. But you must complete your bachelor's degree no later than August 31st of next year. Essentially, you can't become a graduate student until you have already graduated. Now, we look for outstanding academic performance and those who will become successful applicants to our program. We do not, however, have a minimum GPA below which you shouldn't consider applying. It's not first class with honors or don't think about uh, applying to Yanjing Academy. We don't work that way. Rather, it is assumed and expected that all potentially successful Yanjing scholars will be brilliant young scholars and outstanding academic performers in the classroom. But that's not all we're looking at because when you come to Yanjing Academy, you won't just be coming here as a graduate student. You will be living in our community. You will live next door to other Yanjing scholars in a dormitory that's 100 meters away from our administrative and teaching building. And if you've experienced any study abroad before, uh, it can be, it's always a very fun, exciting and rewarding experience, but it can also be very intense because you're already living in a different cultural system, uh, linguistic environment, uh, political system, and university administrative structure. And so we wanna know about you outside of the classroom as well. Are you an artist? Do you have a startup company? Are you committed to charitable work? Are you a musician or an athlete? We want to know about these skills that have been important in shaping who you are as a person, but also we want to think about what interesting things can you add to our student community outside of the classroom. Because we're such a highly diverse student community, we really appreciate applicants who um, have experience in intercultural communication or have cross-cultural engagement as part of their background. Um, at the very minimum, we want people who are excited about that opportunity and would approach it with an open mind uh, and with sensitivity. And since we are a China-focused graduate program, we appreciate applicants who can demonstrate that they have a commitment and an interest in better understanding today's China. You know, at Yanjing Academy, we don't tell you what to think about China. We challenge your assumptions. We give you the best readings. We learn from the best faculty members here at Peking University. And you learn from your classmates who are also brilliant and from different political, cultural, and um, regional backgrounds. We want scholars who will be part of shaping the conversation about China going forward. This is a program not just for people who want to become research professors, but it's a program for people who are committed to having China be a connection in their professional careers moving forward. It's also important that we have students, uh, it's also a requirement that students have English proficiency in order to be successful in our program. So we essentially have three varied paths for application to the program. These are for international students, then there's a path for students from Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan, and then there's an application path for scholars from mainland China. Scholars from mainland China apply through the process known as exemption from the National Postgraduate Entrance Examination. 
international scholars and scholars from Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan submit directly applications to Yanjing Academy at our application portal that you'll see coming up in just a minute. Applicants from Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan as well must also uh, submit applications to the PKU Graduate School Application Portal for applicants from Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan. Here are the details on this coming up. So for international candidates, applications are open until December 3rd of 2023. You will apply at the website you see there, apply.yca.pku.edu.cn. Uh, you will need a certificate of English proficiency if English is not your native language and if you are not enrolled in a degree program that is taught in English. We need certificates of enrollment for your, uh, any institutions of higher education that you've attended and sought a degree at. If you've already received a degree, we need to see your diploma. We need official scripts from all institutions of higher education in which you're enrolled and or studied in a degree program. We have two essays, the personal statement, maximum 750 words in English, and the statement of research interest, maximum 1,500 words excluding citations. We need a resume, and we need two academic letters of recommendation. These must be academic references, and they must be from associate professors or full professors or higher, or the equivalent title. We're aware that not all regional university systems use uh, the assistant associate full professor scale. That's okay. The personal statement in English is your cover letter, essentially. It is your self-introduction to Yanjing Academy and to Peking University, who you are, what you're interested in, why you want to come study in our program, what you can add to our program if you're admitted, where you want to go in your career, and how you think we can help you achieve those goals. The statement of research interest is on the other hand, your intellectual, your academic self-introduction to Yanjing Academy. It is a formal academic document that tells us what you think you want to study for your master's thesis at Yanjing Academy. It should be forward thinking. It's not something you have already done before. It is a formal academic document, so you should be contextualizing your suggested research topic or topics within the work done by other academic scholars. In any graduate school application, if they have a research essay, you would be well advised to engage with secondary academic literature in that research essay. Think of the statement of research interest as the first step in a multi-year conversation you will be having with faculty at YCA and at Peking University, culminating in your eventual master's thesis. However, the statement of research interest does not uh, commit you to making that actually be your eventual thesis topic. We simply want to know by reading how you write about research. We hope to begin to understand how you conceptualize the research process. Applicants from Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan have a later application date. You can see it here. It's December 29th instead of December 3rd. Most of the required documents are the same, but you will need to submit a certificate of English proficiency unless you have already graduated from an English taught degree program. And you can see that the academic letters of recommendation must be from the field to which you are applying. So if you're applying to China Studies, Economics and Management, your references must come from an economics or a management professor. That's all I have for you today. Um, here you can see our website and our social media profiles. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at yca-admissions at pku.edu.cn. Please look at our website. Understand the program. Do your research as you think about applying. I also highly recommend that you look at the profiles of current Yenjing scholars. These are public bios that are on our website. I think when you do so, it should build your confidence and hopefully make you excited about the possibilities of applying and becoming a Yanjing scholar. You'll see that Yanjing scholars are a really diverse group, and I don't just mean diverse in terms of their cultural or regional origin. I mean diverse in terms of their backgrounds, what they've done, what kind of work they've done, what they've studied, where they went to school, 
what interesting things they're doing here and where they hope to go in their career. I hope this will let you know that Yenjing Academy is not a one-size-fits-all program. There isn't a single you know, profile of an applicant that we're looking for. And your experience, should you be admitted, uh, is one that you can create uh, through your own interests and through your own hard work, and sometimes through the surprising uh, nice coincidences of people that you'll meet here as the, in the cohort of other Yanjing scholars. So moving on to the next part of today's presentation, I'm delighted to introduce two of my colleagues, Professor Fan Shiming, who is Associate Dean at the Yanjing Academy and a professor at the School of International Studies at Peking University and Professor Lu Yang, who is the Director of Graduate Studies at Yanjing Academy, as well as a professor in the Department of History. Professor Fan and Professor Lu not only give lectures at the Academy, they also supervise students' theses each year. Together with the students they supervise, we'll be able to learn more about the Yanjing Academy faculty and thesis advisory system, our curriculum, our research, and our funding opportunities. And with that, I'm going to turn the floor over to my colleagues, Professor Fan and Professor Lu. Thank you, Brent, uh, for your wonderful introduction. Uh, now we're going to have a wonderful discussion about uh, the unique advisory system of YCA. Uh, we have a panel of four, um, uh, me included. Um, first, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Lu Yang, a historian by profession and also affiliated with YCA as a member of its faculty. Uh, I supervise mostly students working on a uh, thesis relating to uh, Chinese history. Uh, sit next to me, uh, this wonderful lady, uh, Miss Kaylin Tierney. Uh, she's a second year fellow at YCA. Uh, she's currently working on a thesis uh, relating to uh, the history of Macau. Uh, and uh, we both work together uh, on this particular topic. Hello, everybody. I'm Fan Shiming. I specialize in international relations. And at YCA, I, I offer two courses, uh, one specifically to YCA students uh, on China-U.S. relations. Uh, the other is about uh, news media and international relations at the School of International Studies, where the YCA scholars can take the course. Uh, and uh, in the past few years, I supervised about 18 uh, scholars at YCA uh, from around uh, 10 countries or regions and uh, Sasha is one of my students from Serbia. Um, as we all know, uh, YCA, uh, unlike uh, many different other schools and departments uh, around campus of PKU, uh, we have developed from the very beginning a very unique system of advisory. Um, we offer two different kinds of uh, advisory system. Uh, the one is called um, academic uh, supervisor, uh, which uh, from the very beginning, uh, when the student enter the YCA program, uh, these advisors will offer uh, very uh, needed help uh, to uh, make the students, the fellows, uh, get familiar with uh, the academic environment at the PKU, uh, to give them uh, a certain guidance on uh, the potential directions and interests that they want to develop uh, into their future uh, thesis research and, and the study. Um, and the second level uh, is referred as thesis uh, uh, advisor, uh, which is very similar to uh, the thesis advisor uh, that graduate students uh, have uh, on campus. Uh, these are much more uh, specialized uh, and they are designed to offer uh, very direct uh, help uh, to the students who have already uh, decided uh, which topic they want to work on, uh, what direction, uh, what area of research they want to conduct, uh, and will guide them uh, through their research stage and the writings, and eventually, hopefully, will uh, uh, bring them uh, to a success, uh, successful conclusion uh, by finishing a wonderful thesis. Uh, so now uh, we're going to talk about uh, this particular advisory structure uh, and also the experience we very much like to hear uh, from two wonderful fellows uh, from YCA and uh, their experience about the teaching, about uh, 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 the learning, and also uh, the extracurricular uh, activities uh, which will enrich them uh, in their research and, uh, uh, and the writings. 
I'm sure I can get started with that. Um, hi everybody, my name is Caitlin and I'm from the United States. And um, I previously did my undergraduate at the University of Virginia in East Asian Studies. Um, and while I was doing my undergraduate there, I heard about YCA and became very interested in uh, coming to China and applying to YCA after I finished my undergraduate um, because I really felt like that uh, if I wanted to study China and really understand China better and continue my studies, it was necessary to do that in China, um, which is what prompted me to apply to YCA. Um, and as I mentioned before, or as uh, Lulashra mentioned before, I'm in the history and archaeology uh, research track, um, doing a thesis on Macau. And I think uh, this really can speak to the guidance that thesis and faculty advisors provide to um, us students. Uh, because previously I entered YCA on the law and society track. Um, however, through the interdisciplinary and flexible course schedule at YCA, I was able to take uh, courses in many different fields, such as history, um, philosophy, sociology, and with the help of my faculty advisor from the first year, I was able to um, kind of uh, explore the topics I was interested in and realize that um, I'm able to shift my uh, academic trajectory more towards the history track, which is ultimately what I um, am interested in and will be writing my thesis on. So, yeah. Yeah, I want to add it to uh, what Caitlin just said. Um, uh, YCA, one of the uh, advantage of YCA program is its flexibility, but also uh, its emphasis on uh, the originality of uh, uh, academic uh, research and study. Uh, it gives uh, students a lot of choices uh, and allow them to develop their interest in a relatively interdisciplinary environment so they can discover what they really want to do uh, during their two-year period in China. It's a, it's a very precious uh, uh, experience for them. Uh, and Caitlin uh, is, a, is a very good example of that. Uh, and we also have students who started with uh, interested in other areas, but then gradually uh, uh, concentrated on the area which they probably uh, didn't uh, anticipate from the very beginning. Uh, but with this process, uh, they develop a strong bond uh, with the re study of China uh, and understanding of China. And, and I think that's the, uh, that's the most important uh, result we, we like to see. Um, and for me, um, uh, as Caitlin mentioned, uh, you know, we have a, a very diverse uh, body of students. And Professor Fan Shiming mentioned uh, he has advised uh, 18 students uh, coming from uh, nearly 10 countries. Um, uh, and I have similar experience, uh, probably uh, around the same number of students. Uh, it's certainly comparing to uh, this almost 10-year uh, program of YCA. Uh, this is just a small fraction, uh, but it's still very representative. It represents uh, a diversity, but also a very interesting combination uh, of uh, uh, different strengths. Uh, so f as a faculty uh, member, uh, I often feel that I benefited uh, as much as probably as student uh, from the program, as much uh, from the students themselves, uh, learn a great deal through our mutual discussion uh, and, and casual conversation, but also uh, coursework and more uh, serious uh, field uh, investigation uh, trip. So my name is Stanislav Knežević. I come from Serbia. And here at the Yenching Academy, I'm doing the politics and international relations track. Uh, prior to joining the Yenching Academy, I completed an undergraduate degree in the United States at the Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut, majoring in political science. Uh, and uh, during my junior year of undergrad, I was very fortunate enough to also spend one semester in Paris at the Sciences Po, uh, and uh, during my second semester to spend some time in uh, UCL in London. And by the time I finished my undergraduate studies, I became very, very interested in China's role in international relations in international affairs and wanted to do a degree in China and luckily there was the amazing opportunity of Yenching Academy and uh, I applied. So now I'm working with uh, Professor Fan Shiming uh, on a thesis related to uh, media reports in the United States and China related to the Israel-Palestine conflict which I consider an exceptional opportunity to learn about the role of mass media in shaping trends and dynamics in international relations. So it's an exceptional 
uh, academic opportunity. Okay, right. Uh, and uh, Lu Lao Shi uh, mentioned about the uh, CC supervision system, <coughs> and uh, Caitlin and Sasha uh, also talked about their uh, CSIS topics. Uh, and yes, uh, CSIS and uh, coursework are very important part of the YCA program uh, to help the YCA scholars better deal with their research projects at hand uh, and to uh, further enrich uh, their uh, learning experiences. In general, uh, we actually uh, offer some additional uh, support to our YCA scholars. And uh, this uh, include, uh, uh, for example, the Dean's Grant for student initiated independent research and the language grant uh, for both Chinese and international students to improve their language skills uh, and the opportunity grant, uh, which uh, makes it easier for some of our YCA scholars to participate in international academic events. Uh, yeah, so these are some additional supports uh, that we can uh, offer to our scholars. Uh, but uh, one of the most interesting part of the YCA program for me uh, might be the field study. Uh, uh, I think it's very important uh, for our students uh, to uh, understand China from out of the classrooms and to personally experience that country. Uh, so professors uh, take uh, our students to different places uh, in China and uh, uh, discuss related topics on site. Okay, so. Uh, so we have a small group field study uh, for CIT, uh, China in Transition course. Uh, we also have the uh, field study for all uh, in the past uh, several years in Chongqing and uh, Chengdu, uh, where uh, students can learn a lot about the local history, the cultural diversity, uh, as well as the uh, recent economic and uh, technological development in China. Uh, so I think that's very interesting part uh, of the YCA program. So how, how do you like the program? Yeah. Well, uh, I could make a comment about that. Uh, so during my last year, I took a class with Professor Liu Yang, and it was a class on Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And of course, throughout our engagement with these texts in classroom, we learned so much about these core concepts of China's ancient philosophy. And it was, of course, a great experience for me because besides politics, I'm also very interested in philosophy. But for me, what made this content truly come to life was the field study that Professor Liu Yang organized for us, where he took us to Shandong province, um, and where we had the opportunity to see firsthand the origin of Confucianism. And uh, when you think about the Yenching Academy and the advantages a China studies program in China has, for me, this is probably the best example. So you get the opportunity to get the best kind of education in the classroom, but you also, because you're in China, have this privilege of really seeing the examples of this in real life. And I think that's very unique and it's very special. Mm. I'm, I'm very grateful for uh, uh, Sasha's comment. Uh, and both Caitlin and Sasha uh, took my course's uh, seminar on Chinese history. Uh, but as all, virtually all classes uh, at YCA, uh, the faculty uh, always uh, understand that the importance of linking uh, China as a, as a real uh, existence uh, with the China uh, in uh, s academic writings uh, and want a student to uh, make their own observation uh, and their own um, uh, opinions uh, about what they have learned uh, in the classroom. Um, and so uh, faculty can always initiate uh, field trips uh, as they see uh, necessary. Um, and this kind of uh, experience uh, add a, a lot of uh, uh, important uh, dimensions uh, to our teaching and advisories 
uh, and certainly I uh, appreciate uh, the experience they have. And I'm sure Caitlin uh, also have a uh, lot to say about uh, the experience that she has. Sure, so I would love to add on to that about the funding opportunities that you mentioned. I um, was very fortunate to receive the Mandarin Language Enrichment Scholarship, which has been funding me to attend Chinese classes, uh, intensive Chinese classes in my second year. And that has been a wonderful both personal enrichment opportunity to improve my Chinese, um, but also to contribute to my research in terms of uh, improving my ch Chinese to a level in which I can uh, use academic papers and books written in Chinese in addition to my uh, English language resources to supplement um, my own thesis studies. Um, and then regarding the field study opportunities, I'd like to speak on the CIT field study uh, that is planned in the second semester of YCA. Uh, students get to uh, join a research group in uh, various topics that they're interested in and plan their own field study to go to um, anywhere in China and uh, conduct field research that is going to help them eventually present in the CIT field study forum at the end of the year. Um, and that for me was a really precious opportunity not only to experience a field study, um, but also to participate in planning one myself alongside with my uh, group members. Uh, we plan to go to Xiamen uh, to conduct environmental research, which was also another interdisciplinary mm -hmm. opportunity that I had to step outside of my uh, normal history research and try something new alongside my classmates. Okay, I'm happy you all enjoyed uh, the field trips and uh, uh, took the advantage of this uh, uh, supporting uh, grants. Uh, next week, I think Lula Shu will take some other students to another yes. uh, field study. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, uh, have organized uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, field studies. Uh, uh, I think that those are uh, very much connected uh, with what we're uh, learning in the classroom and the things that we discuss uh, in the classroom. Um, but I think um, we always, uh, as a YCA uh, member of a YCA faculty, uh, I understand that a YCA uh, is a, a, like an international family. Uh, we are very open to different viewpoints. Uh, our students actually are very independent. Uh, this is something I, I, I can clearly uh, see um, over uh, the experience since the beginning of YCA. Um, our students are very independent and they form their own opinion about China. Uh, about Chinese relationship with the rest of the world. Um, but I want to stress the fact that um, it is equally important uh, for them to uh, develop their opinion through uh, their own interactions, uh, not just the formal learning in the classroom, uh, the interaction with faculty advisors, but also their own interactions, uh, their own conversations, their own activities. As Caitlin and Sasha mentioned, uh, many of these activities actually are initiated by the students themselves. Uh, and then uh, our uh, faculty basically follow suit. Uh, we uh, uh, very much uh, learn from them and get their ideas uh, and hope to, uh, uh, to bring their opinions uh, into uh, the system and the curriculum. Uh, I'm sure that uh, they have more to tell us about uh, their uh, interactions uh, in, in, in a different kind of settings, um, a setting that uh, not necessarily involved faculties. Right. Sure, I can start with that one. Um, at PKU, I've been really fortunate to uh, work for the International Students Division of the mm -hmm. Office of International Relations to help them uh, with various office work and translation and hosting events such as the International Cultural Festival. Um, and I also have been fortunate to be working with the um, Office of Global Communications on their um, website publication content, both in uh, translation from Chinese to English as well as a unique English language publication. Um, and that has been a really precious opportunity to, uh, aside from all the activities and studies that I do at YCA, to get to interact more with the PKU community um, and both with the offices there, but also to meet uh, fellow classmates from different departments, both in undergrad and in various graduate programs um, within PKU. Um, so I definitely think there are many opportunities out, uh, both inside YCA, but also in the Peking University community for us students to get involved with, um, both for our own uh, enrichment, but also to uh, help support the university. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, Peking University is uh, one of China's 
most important educational institutions and it very often hosts some very important events. Uh, we all know that uh, many world business leaders, uh, politicians, scientists very frequently come to Peking University to give speeches, to interact with student communities. Um, and for me, I always felt very grateful for the opportunity to be here on campus and have the ability to attend such events. Uh, one that comes in mind in particular was the visit of the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations to the Peking University campus, where we as Yenching Academy students had the privilege of direct interaction and conversation with such a distinguished uh, international leader. So that is an incredible opportunity for interaction between YCA and PKU, and it can really help you uh, broaden your horizons and develop as a student and as a person. Yeah, one thing I want to add uh, after uh, uh, Sasha's comment uh, is YCA uh, is not as an international family, not just including uh, non-Chinese students, but also a significant uh, a body of Chinese students. Mm -hmm. Um, although uh, the two uh, students we have uh, you know, as our panelists uh, both come from uh, foreign countries, but uh, we also have uh, a significant contribution made by Chinese students. Uh, and so I think the presence of both Chinese students and interna international students at YCA add tremendous value uh, to PKU as a university. Um, uh, their involvement, uh, as Caitlin mentioned, uh, in minute day-to-day -day, uh, operations of the university uh, to uh, a much broader conversation they engaged with foreign leaders, uh, scientists, politicians, and businessmen, um, give um, any visitor to PKU a sense that this is a, a very unique community, uh, a, a community with a world reach. Uh, and we certainly hope uh, this trend will continue um, by attracting uh, equally uh, mm -hmm. capable and, and uh, uh, very innovative-minded uh, students uh, around the world uh, and to come to this campus uh, to work with us uh, and to work with future faculty members at PKU uh, and work with uh, fellow students to continue this legacy um, and tradition. Right, right. I, I totally agree with you, Professor Lu. I think uh, we are proud of our outstanding scholars, and uh, we are expecting uh, new uh, comers, uh, the uh, prospect uh, students uh, to YCA. For me, I think, uh, firstly, I, I hope that they are uh, enthusiastic about uh, intellectual life, uh, especially those relating to China. Uh, it's not necessary for our scholars to be uh, China hands mm -hmm. or a professional uh, academia. Uh, but I think it's very important uh, that uh, we have people who understand China with more nuanced, uh, sophisticated way. And secondly, I hope our upcoming scholars uh, can be uh, open to new uh, different things, uh, accommodating to diversity, uh, and uh, uh, they are uh, uh, enthusiastic to contribute uh, to the cross-cultural communication at YCA. So I think that's my expectation uh, to the upcoming uh, scholars.